Assalamualaikum to all of you Today we are going to cover the final topic in the syllabus which is under chapter 6 Land Law okay, Malaysian Land Law Alright guys, the outlines for today is first we are going to uh, start with the definitions of land Okay, you need to understand the definition of land based on section 5 of the National Land Code. And then uh, followed by a uh, law of fixture versus a chattel. Third is on the classification of land and categories of land use. Followed by a torrent system. And last but not least is we need to determine on the consequences of the uh, defeasible title obtained by subsequent purchaser okay but uh, not to worry because uh, this topic will only deal with the basic of Malaysian land law so this is our learning objective for today at the end of the lesson student is able to define land under section 5 of the National Land Code 1965. Please bear in mind that this is the only uh, principal legislation available for a Malaysian land law, eh? National Land Code 1965. This is very comprehensive. It governs all the uh, procedures, okay, all the uh, requirements in regards to land transaction and land ownership. Okay, and second, a student is able to outline the concept of indefeasibility of title. In regards to the law of fixtures and chattel, uh, this rule is governed under this uh, uh, learning objective. Okay, so we are going to see one by one of the, uh, of the important subtopics under land law. Okay, first we start with the definition of land based on section 5. First, under section 5, subsection A, land means the surface of the earth and all substance forming that surface. And then, uh, the earth below the surface and all substance therein, all vegetation and all the natural products whether or not requiring the practical applications of labor to the productions and whether on or below the surface. And then, this is very important limb, all things attached to the earth or permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth, whether on or below the surface. And last but not least, it also includes land covered by water. Okay, but for the purpose of the syllabus, okay, we need to identify okay, the items under paragraph D. This is because it is easy to determine uh, whether a particular object or item forms part of land under paragraph A, B, C and E. But it is quite difficult to ascertain object and items under paragraph D. And this is known as the rule of fixture and chattel. Okay, based on this rule, okay, basically, it is stated in section 5, subsection D of the National Land Code. So, what is known by fixture and chattel? Fixtures. Fixtures means an item that is attached to the land and it is immovable. Uh, in other words, it is fixed to the land, it attached to the land and cannot be removed. If you want to remove it, then it will cause excessive damage to the land. So it shall be from part of the land. How about chatters? Chatters is an item even if it is attached to the land but it is still removable and it shall not form part of the land land. So, chapters mean some things that can be uh, removed. Okay. 
why you need to determine these items is fixture or chattel this is because eh, based on two uh, considerations first is uh, right of purchaser on a certain items in sale and purchase agreement of land and land with the house built on it who has right uh, so how we are going to determine if okay on that particular land there was a house so who is considered as owner of the house okay and then the other reason is right of charge bank this is where the owner charge his land to bank and then the owner defaulted so what is the rights given to the bank how about the items in the house okay so this is uh, why we need to determine the items the objects considered as fixtures or chattel okay in order for us to determine if for standard fixture or chattel we must refer to this maxim okay and this maxim is known as quick quick Time tether solo solo credit. It means whatever attached to the land belongs to the land. Okay, the principle is very simple. Whatever is affixed to the land becomes part of the land. Okay, based on the case of Holland and Hobson, all things attached to the land are fixtures, thus, shall form part of the land. So everything they attach to the land considered as fixtures. However, in order to determine whether the items is fixtures or chattels, we need to we need to um, fulfill the two these two tests. Okay, the first test is degree of annexation test. We need to look into the uh, degree of the object attached to the land and second test is we are going to look into the purpose or object of annexation test why we attach the goods uh, sorry why we attach the object to the land okay next okay uh, so we discussed the first test a degree of annexation test this test looks at the object either be strongly or lightly attached or even resting by its own weight to the land. And to what extent an injury will be caused upon the removal of the objects. So based on this test, the stronger an object is attached to the land, the more likely the item is considered as fixture. And the more damage or injury is caused upon its removal, the more likely it is considered to be part of the land. Okay, so on the degree of annexation test, we need to look into the degree of the annexation. Okay, sequat so mana the object is attached to the land. Okay, for example, a house. Okay, a modern house, eh? So, to what extent uh, the house is attached to the land? Obviously, the answer is yes, it was strongly attached. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and then, this test is not a conclusive test, meaning that this test alone is not sufficient and it can be rebutted by the second test. Second tier, sorry, second test here is purpose of annexation test and it deals with the intention of the person who annexed the item to the land. So we need to look into the purpose. What important is not so much how firm or string the object has been fixed to the land but the question is why it was a fix uh, the reason okay for example why you affix the kitchen cabinet uh, for you to enjoy the 
house, the land, okay, its usefulness, its value. So kitchen cabinet may be regarded as fixture. Okay, and then we need to answer the first task. To what extent if we are able to remove the kitchen cabinet, okay, whether it may cause excessive damage to the house. If the answer is yes, then kitchen cabinet considered as fixture. If an article is attached to the land merely for the enjoyment and use of the item as a chattel, it rebuts the presumptions that it is a fixture. For example, aircon. Okay, when you attach an aircon in your bedroom, does it considered as fixture? It will not cause excessive damage once you uh, once you uh, remove it from the wall. Okay, so aircon may be regarded as chattel, right? Okay, example of case, uh, we are going to look into Malaysian case. Eh? Go Chong Hing against Consolidated Malay Rubber. So the first of the case, Gong Chong Hing charged his land, including buildings and factory to the chargee. Chargee here is a uh, bank. Eh? There was machinery in the factory, annexed by nuts and bolts to concrete foundation sunk in the soil. He was then executed the bill of sale over the machinery in the factory to Consolidated Malay Rubber Estates Limited, known as Granti. Okay, next, the owner, okay, he wants to sell the machinery in the factory to the Consolidated Malay Rubber Estates. Okay, so the items that we need to determine now is the machinery in the factory. And the charge then, by the consent of Goh Chong Hing, took positions of the land and the factory. Okay, now, bank, the charge eh, took the positions of the, sorry, uh, took positions of the land and factory. And the grantee applied for order to seize and sell the machinery by virtue of the bill of sale. Okay, so the grantee says that okay, the machinery are belongs to them, so they want to sell it. Okay, and the charge in this case claim that the machinery and nets by nuts and bolts are fixtures and the grantee claim that they are chatters. So which one is correct? Uh, whether the machinery is fixture or chattels. And the court held that on appeal it was held that the English law of fixtures applies whereby the machinery is considered as a fixture because the machinery was affixed with nuts and bolts to the floor. Okay, so it is fully attached to the floor, to the land. Uh, and therefore, it regarded as fixture. So this is how you determine. Okay, you will go uh, through the two tests. Okay, an example of case. Another example of case shell company of Federated of Malaya against Commissioner of the Federal Capital of Kuala Lumpur. Underground storage petroleum tank is fixture. Okay, if you damage it and it will cause excessive damage. Okay, however, okay, uh, we also have exceptions to the law of fixture and chattel. Okay, because according to the general rule, all fixtures are to be considered as part of the land. General rule said that anything that attached to the land considered as fixture. However, okay, there are two exceptions. First exception, customs allow for a removal. The fixture is removable even if it is affixed to the land. For example, Malay wooden house built on stilts. Okay, if we uh, remember, okay, those days we have Malay wooden house, then you boleh remove. Uh, okay, so example of case is a Ritiambi Benti Ma'ami. A Malay wooden house is movable property and it is a chattel it can be removed. So, it rebuts the general rule of 
law of fixture and chattel. Okay, under exception 2, based on tenants' fixtures, item brought, <clears throat> okay, items brought it and attached uh, to the rented place by the tenant for the purpose of carrying out his business. And for instance, ovens or antique door to his rented place. However, the tenant can remove these items at the end of the tenancy period if there is a landlord-tenant relationship and no substantial injury or damage to the landlord premise during removal. The second point is very important eh? based on the case of Spire against Philipson. Okay, so that's all in regards to the law of fixtures and chattel. Next, we continue with the classic, uh, classifications and categories of land use.